heavy. Bored. Ask you about your background, your poetry background, your MFA background. Uh, just tell listeners a little bit of how you got into poetry, what started you on poetry. What I mean, shit, what made you want to pursue like an MFA? Because that's like pro level. I mean, at least we, we call it that, right? We're like, oh, let's go to the pros. Like we'll go to the MFA or something. So what, what inspired you to do that? Was it college? Was it? Um, I always was into poetry, like ever since I was a kid. Um, I just was always kind of a writer. And so it was just like a hobby, really. And then uh, when I was in high school, I, you know, I, I took a creative writing class like in high school. And during that, I wrote a lot of poems and some short fiction and some personal essays and stuff and ended up kind of compiling a portfolio together and ended up winning an award in that what's it called like the scholastic art and writing awards like those awards for high schoolers or whatever so at the time i was like oh yeah like i'm a real poet like i got acknowledged by the establishment whatever and then i went to college and um this was like oh i don't know like 12 years ago and i was an english major so i did take a couple writing workshops in college just because that was like part of the major but I, I didn't study creative writing specifically it was kind of folded into the English major and um, I wrote some terrible terrible poetry during that time <laughs> but obviously at the time I thought was good and I look back on it now and just like painfully cringe but uh yeah but I didn't really think I was going to do anything with it I didn't submit it anywhere I, it was more just like for me and then graduated college in 2013 and after that, I became a copywriter. So I wasn't really writing poetry anymore. And I kind of, over the years of like writing copy and writing professionally for my job, started to kind of think like, oh, I used to be a creative writer, but that was just like a high school, like fleeting fantasy. That's not like, I'm not good at it as an adult, but I wasn't like trying. Like I, I didn't know if I was good at it. I just assumed that I wasn't. And people would ask me like coworkers, like, oh, like, do you, do you write in your spare time? And I'd be like, no. And I didn't. I didn't write in my spare time from about 2012 until 2020. And then um, when COVID happened, I got laid off from my job. And that's when I started writing again. Like I just like had all this free time. And so I started writing again. And I was still into poetry, like in the interim, like I would read it and I was interested in it. I just wasn't writing it. So once I started writing again, I, and I didn't want to go back to copywriting and I was just like really burnt out by everything with COVID. So I ended up applying to do this MFA and got in and I don't know, it was awesome. I felt like I finally got back in touch with this part of myself that I had kind of left behind a while ago. And um, yeah, that it, I don't think I really learned a lot on the MFA and I, I feel like this is a lot of people's experience and I want to talk about yours, but a lot of people that I talk to, like, it's not that you learn how to become a better writer it's more just you have the time to write and that inherently makes you a better writer. So like even looking back on like what I submitted with my application versus like what I ended up with, like after the course was like night and day in terms of like the quality that I perceive in my work. Um, and I've published in like lit mags and stuff like that since, um, I do have a collection that's like basically done, but I haven't submitted it to any publishers. I need to. I've been kind of taking a hiatus from writing for the past year. Um, but yeah, that's kind of my background. I definitely was like a Tumblr girl back when I was like in college. And I think that's how I first came across Psychin. Like, I think I came across Litany in which certain things are crossed out like on Tumblr. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say, I was going to ask you that first experience of Psychin. Yeah, it's interesting with the MFA, like there's a lot of, especially like in the circles that we hang out with online, there's like, there's a lot of shitting on MFAs and it's like, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of telling that the people that shit on them never went to one, you know, like they couldn't get into the MFA and they're like, oh, fuck that. It's like, yeah. And I understand where they're coming from. Cause like, there is like a snobbishness to it. There is like, I don't know, that kind of like academics, like like veneer to it that is kind of like stuffy and not cool uh but like you said i mean you do learn skills like not just because even if you have shitty teachers or whatever or you go to like a pay to play mfa or whatever you know just the fact that you're forced to be like i have to turn in something like every other week or every week like it forces you to just do that work 
and then like you have people like straight up criticizing it in like no, it workshops. So accountable. Like I, I think I'm the kind of person who needs that sort of deadline, and I think that's what I've struggled with post MFA. I don't know about you, but I have barely written anything since my MFA, and I think it's because I don't have that structure anymore of like knowing that I have to bring something to workshop. You know? Yeah, I mean that's a very common sentiment. Uh, my mentor. Inner resources. shows such a lack Heavy. of gratitude for life forward. I, I aspire to boredom, Heavy. I should say. Bored. Heavy. I am heavy, heavy, heavy. Bored. Has you night sweats and the day sweats, pal? Pal, I do.